So the aviation industry has entered a new decade. Not on the brightest note, but this decade holds many new challenges, new technologies, and more importantly, new frontiers to overcome. And as part of a new series of videos under which I term Project Zen. In this video, we kickstart this project and take a look at the Aerion AS2. In future videos, we also take a look at the business case for supersonic air travel, some challenges and whether it can fit in today's society. But before we dive any deeper, if you're new here, a warm welcome and do stay tuned for more great videos on the way. Firstly though, hats off to the Aerion company and the AS2. The aircraft is a private corporate jet flying only 11 passengers to distances of 4,200 nautical miles when flying Mach 1.4 cruising at 54,000 feet. When flying at its optimum cruise speed of Mach 0.95, the aircraft can cover 5,400 nautical miles. It is targeted at business execs needing a quick hop over the Atlantic, say from New York to London cutting flight time 40% from 8 hours down to under 5. Incorporating a natural laminar flow wing with high aspect ratio and T-tail reducing drag, the aircraft is designed to reduce drag 20% and soften its sonic boom to near imperceptible levels up to Mach 1.2. The light airframe reduces thrust needed, thus no after-burning engines which guzzle fuel, but simple General Electric Affinity engines developed from the CFM56, the engine powering most A320s today. This engine, however, is modified with a new twin fan low pressure section to slow the air down before entering the engine and reduced bypass ratios. It has 18,000 pounds of thrust each, though three of them get the AS2 up to speed easily. The cabin, however, is rather conventional, especially at this price point. Oh yes, the price. At 120 million a pop, this is one expensive ride. To put things into perspective, a Gulfstream G650, a slightly larger, more spacious aircraft with more range, can be had for half the price. Still, for that extra money, surely the Arion will run rings around the Gulfstream, right? Well, it depends. See, the AS2 can fly only at its maximum speed for routes up to 4,200 nautical miles. Beyond that, it can only fly at Mach 0.95, 5% faster than G650ER stop speed. G650ER also has the longer legs, flying more than 7,000 nautical miles. Flying from San Francisco to Singapore, the G650ER can do the mission in one go, while AS2 would have to make a fuel stop, reducing the time saved. The big issue with supersonic travel boils down to two concerns, cost and environmental friendliness. Cost is still an issue, but Arion believes it's found a solution to environmental concerns. Firstly, of course, the engines aren't fuel guzzlers, unlike those on previous supersonic passenger aircraft. Secondly, the aircraft was designed with biofuels in mind. The third issue though is the sonic boom. Supersonic flights have not been permitted over land due to loud sonic booms. Aeron hopes to get the all clear with their boomless technology, with the aerodynamics designed to reduce sonic boom shock waves to nearly imperceptible levels on the ground up to Mach 1.2. With supersonic flights above land approved, the AS2 could change transcontinental travel within US and China. All in all, the AS2 is one of the most revolutionary aircraft that many hope will spark the rebirth of supersonic flight. The 
Jet 2 represents the best of supersonic air travel, the closest we civilians can ever get to moving faster than sound, but will be a small fraction of the future of air travel. Stay tuned in this new series to learn where majority of us are actually headed to, and what kind of an aviation industry we are actually striving towards, and why it may be actually all the better for us and our globe. But till we meet, then wishing everyone a truly clear sky ahead.